Pat, we are focused on targeting the violence. Mobile Police tonight holding a community event aimed at mentoring our youth, hoping to give our kids an outlet and cut down on crime. We have team coverage right now. Let's send it first to my co-anchor, Kim Anderson. She is live at Baumauer Randall Park on Duval Street. Hey, Kim. Hey, Greg, this is one of the first of four events for this summer put on by the Mobile Police Department. This event started at 3 o'clock, and if we can pan around, you can see some of the things that are going on. You've got dance lines going on. You have police officers who are mingling with families in the crowd. They're trying to let people know that they're the good guys, that they're to help us, and if you need any help, to make sure that you give them a call. There's also uh, different venues and events. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit, but let's talk a little bit about the volunteers who took their time out today to come down here and make sure that they were here to work with the families and work with the children. One of those volunteers says that he was one of those kids and now what he needs to do is he needs to teach them how to listen to him and how to listen to adults to take good advice and have a little fun at the same time. He teaches music. Let's listen to what he has to say. To get them captured, now they listen to me because they, they're having fun but then I can tell them you have to listen to each other. I give them a specific rhythm to play, and they have to keep that rhythm, and they have to listen to each other. Now, Mr. Wayne Curtis says when they listen to each other, they learn how to respect each other. We're going to have more in his story coming at 10 o'clock. Now, let's talk about the agencies that are out here. There are about 20 agencies out here that are giving information and giving help to families and children who come by their booth, and they need that. NBC 15's Lisa Labrignac has been out here at Baumhammer Randall Park since they opened this event at 3 o'clock. Lisa, now these organizations have one goal in common. Yeah, that's right, Kim. Everybody here wants to put an end to all of the crime we're seeing in Mobile. And they say it all starts with making sure people have access to resources. A corridor full of services, the Mobile County Health Department, WIC, Bishop State, Counseling Services, Parks and Rec, the list goes on. But one thing they all have in common, these agencies want to help people. Food is more expensive, so we are trying to help just smart shopping. You know, if you have food stamps and WIC, combining those and just being as strategic as possible. Food is expensive, and even with summer feeding programs through the Mobile County Public School System, people may need other options. Because a lot of our um, communities are not offering free lunch services right now, so sometimes we're charged with, um, you know, contacting food banks to try to get families food. We also have like a little private pantry of our own that we um, have non-perishable items um, that we can pass out to families. Trying to close that gap, part of the goal of this event. So often, Mobile Police say crime traces back to someone not having the proper resources or access to them when they need it the most. We have seen many issues of violence in our community and it, it just touches our hearts and we know that there are many things that we can do to prevent this violence and to uplift our community. So. Melissa McKnight works for the Health Equity Office at the Mobile County Health Department. The Health Equity Office is fairly new, about a year old, and they're working in 15 different zip codes in Mobile to address health disparity and inequity. This is one of the areas we know that many communities in Mobile County are dealing with um, health disparities, chronic conditions that have only been exacerbated by the COVID pandemic. Now, coming up at six, you're going to hear from two people that I spoke with. Both have someone very close to their heart that was killed by a bullet. For now, Kim, I'll go ahead and send it back to you. Lisa, thank you. Now, let's talk real quick about why these events are taking place. We have seen violent crimes among teenagers being committed by teenagers spike in the past few years. In fact, just school hadn't even been out a week, and we had two kids, a 14 and 11-year-old, who were caught in the crossfire of guns, and both of them were killed. We talked to the mayor of Mobile a little earlier today. We're going to hear from him a little later in this newscast on how things like this are working toward his goal of making Mobile the safest city in the country. Greg?